How's it going everyone? Today I'm going to show you my three favorite effects from my most recent Bravis video. I've been getting a lot of DMs and questions about some of the effects in here and they're pretty easy to do so I'm going to do a whole breakdown and show you exactly what I did. So let me show you the video and then we'll get right into this. Разговоры по душам, черт это все, видимо, любовь ушла, а строк и стек. Ты дома плачешь одна, снова на гастролях, что снова катастрофа, хочешь, напиши письмо мне. Пропадаю и игнорю, что ж, I'm sorry, знаю, хочешь знать, как я, я радостный лишь в этих сторис. So first, in the beginning, right here, we have a depth of field. So you can notice that the cargo crate on the top left is in focus, while the background's out of focus. So let's go into our composition and let me break it down for you. For this shot right here, you're going to need three aspects. You're going to need the original clip, you're going to need an adjustment layer for that clip, which will be the blur, and then on the top layer, you need the mask layer, which in this case is that cargo box. Right here, we have Gaussian blur, and then on the bottom is the original clip. So let me delete all these and let me restart to show you. So the first thing we're going to need is an adjustment layer. So we're going to go ahead, make an adjustment layer on top of our original clip, and for this one, we're going to add Gaussian blur. So we'll start off with the blurriness. We'll set this at around 25. Depends on your footage, but 4K footage, 25 works pretty well for Gaussian blur. And we'll go in about halfway, set that back to zero. Obviously this is keyframed. I might move it a bit more and create an S curve on it or easy ease it, depends on what you want to do. So we'll see, we have a blur, and then it will unblur as it focuses into the car. So the next thing we need is to duplicate our original layer Put that on top of our adjustment layer and i'm going to go ahead and pre-compose that clip first so just pre-compose that so you have a clean palette no effects on it so you have two options option one is rotor brush or you can use your pen tool i'm gonna try the rotor brush first i did use a mask tool instead but we'll see if the rotor brush works for this so we'll just select our cargo crate it does struggle finding a little bit you could color grade this real quick if you're an s log so you could have this stand out more but I'm just gonna go ahead, delete rotor brush, and let's just mask this. So when we zoom in, we have a little piece that sticks out here. So we can't do just a straight line. So I'm gonna go ahead and mask around this just for the details. So now we have our mask. I'm gonna press F on my keyboard, open the mask feather, probably set this to around five. Nothing too crazy, just a little bit. And we can also try to track the mask. So in this case, it's very easy to just keyframe this mask and adjust it, but it doesn't hurt to try quicker and faster options. So it's not bad, but it's also not great. So I'm just gonna delete some of the points and just continue on my own. So make sure you have your mask keyframed before you do this. So it's gonna end right around here. That's when we have the car in the background in focus. So I'm just gonna trim it right there. We'll zoom in into the clip so you can see a little bit better. And now we have our mask. So you can see it's already standing out. So what you can do is go to your Gaussian blur on your adjustment layer and increase that even more. If you want it to stand out even more than it already is. So if, if I increase it a lot, it'll be heavily noticeable. For the sake of this video, I'll do it. But this effect is pretty much self-explanatory. And there we have it for the first clip. So the next effect I'm going to go over is the lettering right here. Um, I did put a Lego sound effect for the letters coming down because that's kind of what I had in mind when I saw the letters coming down. So let me go into that pre-comp and just show you what's going on here. So we have a ton of stuff. So to execute this effect, you need to single out every single piece of the text. So in this case, it's the Brabus logo. So each one of these layers is a different piece of that logo, as you can see. And for each one of these, I have the opacity start at zero. So it'll fade in as it comes down. So see right here, it'll be a little bit faded out. And then when it comes down, it'll fade in as well as enabling motion blur on this. It's very important to add the motion blur so it doesn't have like an artificial feel, but that's how I did every single one of these. That's pretty much self-explanatory. I don't need to show you that, but, but to execute this, let me just hide these real quick. To get this done, you need to do a content aware fill. I already did a tutorial on the content aware fill. If you haven't seen that one, it's the how to make a car invisible, but I'll go over it very quickly. So right here, we have the original layer, right? So I just duplicated it, cropped it, and then I masked out what I want to remove. As you can see, I have it keyframed as well. It doesn't have to be perfect, but make sure you cover everything that you want to get rid of. So once that was removed, you need to do Ibon to select just that layer. You can also solo it, so you make sure you have it only, and then switch the mask style to subtract. And then after that, you open up the Content Aware Fill tab. Uh, if you don't have this, go to Window, Content Aware Fill. I put it right here, and this is what I like to do. I have my expansion around four to six at times, Fill method, object, lighting correction. You can do moderate, strong, but in this case, I use subtle. 
And then for the range, you just put work area. That's why we trimmed it just to this. And then once that generates a fill, you'll get this layer right here. So it wasn't perfect. So a little trick I like to do is add Gaussian blur. So Gaussian blur will blend this in a little bit better. If I remove the Gaussian blur, you can see little imperfections like this right here. So you can either clone stamp that out or just add Gaussian blur. It'll only be a second of the footage. If it's not too noticeable, don't worry about it. And after that, I masked every letter and had it come down and it would end at its original position. So let me play this out for you. Another thing you want to note is I do this before I do the speed ramping. Just so when I speed ramp, it has a natural feel that it's incorporated in the original clip. So let me play it with the speed ramp. So let's move on to my third favorite thing from this video that I made for Bravis. So right here, we have the exhaust effect. It's almost the same method with the content aware fill where you remove the exhaust. But in this case, I had two exhaust tips that came out at different timings. So I'm going to open up this pre-comp. And let me show you what's inside. So the top three layers we have here, we have the mask of the side skirt of the Brabus. And then on the bottom two, we have the exhausts. So, so just the exhaust. And to note, the top layer is very important. This layer right here, because if you don't have this, you're going to get something like this. So to hide that, you just mask out the top. Easy solution. Right here, we have the position going in, and then it goes back to the original value. So how I do this is I'd set the original position with the key marker, go to the beginning, drag this back down. I drag it towards the area that I want it to be coming from. And after that, you can just adjust your keyframes, easy ease, fast in, whatever you need to do. So we'll do a fast in for this one because we want it to come out first. And then we'll have the one behind it come out second. You also need to note that the layers in order matter. So on the top layer, we have the first exhaust tip that comes out, which is in the front. And in the back, we have the rear exhaust. If we had this flipped, it just wouldn't work. It would overlap the first exhaust tip and looks funky, right? So you need to make sure your layers are properly ordered. In addition, I wanted the front one to come out so it would hide the imperfections of the back exhaust. Since I don't have a full clip of the, since I don't have a full mask of the back exhaust tip, this is how you can get away without having any edges cut or imperfections showing. And as always, you add motion blur, enable it right there. And the final thing or the last thing you want to do when you do this is the fill layer. Same exact method that I showed you before. You're going to duplicate your layer and you're going to mask it. Once you mask it, set your work area to that layer, I-B-O-N, i bond. And then you're going to go to content where fill, object, subtle, or moderate. And then generate fill layer. So once you have that, you're good. And then this is the final result. So you see how smooth and natural it comes out with the speed ramp? That is all because I did it inside the pre-comp before I speed ramped in my main composition. It's a little trick that I like to do, and you should do it too. Depending on the effect, this works in almost every case, and I recommend doing it. And that completes this video. I will be uploading a lot more videos onto my YouTube channel. So make sure you subscribe, press like, and I hope you can learn something.